Let's answer some questions now. Josh, you're up first. Paul in Minnesota. Uh, Josh, I bought Slack on your recommendation. It's up 36% now. What do I do? Well, I, I am not selling. So I think if you want to um, do some risk management here because you have a nice gain, and I don't, I don't know if you're an investor here or a trader, I would look at that $30 level. Um, that was a triple top. It went for a fourth time and broke above. Big volume came in. It was a very obvious breakout. I think we talked about it on the show in real time. Um, so if you wanted to say, OK, that's now support, where's my out? Where does the market tell me the trade is over? That's not a terrible place to put in a stop loss and let it ride. Um, I am not playing with the stop loss. I'm long. I'm an investor. I'm a huge believer in this company disrupting email forever. We run our whole business using Slack. I think it's a phenomenal product, and I think there's a lot of years of growth ahead. Okay. So my outlook on it is, is bullish. Watching that uh, stock get a lift there. Okay, Weiss coming to you now. Tom in Williamsburg, Virginia has a question for you. What is your opinion of Akamai? It's one of my favorite companies. It's, it's a core position for me. It has been for a while. It's really not that well-known a story. But if you're on the Internet, and we know how Internet traffic has exploded, your chances are you're dealing with Akamai, Amazon, Best Buy, uh, Chinese Internet companies, their clients, the top 25 banks in the U.S., top 25 banks or 24 in Europe, et cetera, et cetera. So their, their web security and they improve the, fan ex the customer experience. Now, this is all happening. It's almost hitting a new all-time high without sports. But they also handle the sports web traffic. When that comes back, then you'll see it really explode. So I'm staying there. I think stock goes a lot higher. John, Nigerian to you. Mark in Annapolis, Maryland. I bought Apple at the end of March. Is it safe to trim some for profit? That's a good question. Um, if you're in a tax-free account, absolutely. If you're not, I instead would sell calls against it, Scott. I know what a fan of Hollywood you are. They just did a big deal with Scorsese for one of his, uh, the next thing after The Irishman. That's going to be on Apple. They've got other big things in the works. I think there's more positive runway here. Uh, so I wouldn't exit the stock entirely. All right, Margaret from Jeet in Toronto, Canada. If you had one stock to pick among Walmart, Target, and Costco for medium to long-term growth, which one would it be? Look, no, no investor can argue against, you know, how well positioned all three of those companies are given what's just occurred, you know, with our economic crisis, with the COVID-19 situation, uh, the number of customers all three of these companies have acquired during this time frame as they have been building out their supply chains for e-commerce and delivering value and convenience to consumers. Uh, but of those three, I would say from a long-term perspective, uh, Costco has been a long-term core holding, a very durable growth model, uh, historically, you know, grows their earnings at a high single-digit rate, uh, competitive, competitive advantage of scale. They deliver unmatched value uh, to consumers. Uh, we've still yet to hear about any kind of special dividend. I imagine in this environment we won't get one. Uh, but that is also some long-term upside for investors looking for dividends and income. All right, round two now underway. Josh Brown from Raj in Virginia. What about Berkshire Hathaway? Is it a buy? So I bought a whole bunch of stocks in March um, as the markets were getting crushed. And this was the worst one of all that I bought because it really ha it's bounced a little bit. I'm OK in it. But like I could have bought almost anything else and been up like 20, 30 percent. So this has not performed for me uh, as well as some of the other stuff I picked up. I'm still in it. My time my time horizon is not usually a month or two. So like I'm 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 long the stock. I'm staying long it. But. I'm not like full throated pounding my fist on the table. I was actually very surprised that they didn't take advantage of uh, the huge drop in stocks and buy more of their core positions. Uh, Berkshire were actually out there selling that may be related to insurance liability with the pandemic and that uncertainty. I'm not really sure. Maybe he was just talking to Bill Gates too much. But um, I think a lot of people are disappointed <laughs> in how Berkshire has recovered. And we saw Bill Ackman was a seller and uh, Warren Buffett is his idol. So um, I'm not that excited about this holding of mine, but I, I am in it. Yeah, understood. And, and all, the, all, the, all of those points you made are, are certainly good and well taken. All right, Steve Weiss, back to you from Adrian in Singapore. More of a general investing question, but good nonetheless. Going to force you to think, though, if I have some funding to invest for two to four years, what are the stocks that have the most gain potential over that time period? 
To me, that's a very, very easy question. And I'm going to come back where I've talked about in the past, 5G. Yeah, the performance has been great. But over the next 10 years, forget about two to four, you're going to see extreme outperformance from these names as 5G is a platform technology going to virtually every business use versus 4G, which is only a mobile network. So that's where I'd be. That is Akamai. That is Skyworks. And also the edge, data centers. That's where 5G is going to play as well. So it's, that's where I'd be. It's funny. I had another um, tweet for you uh, about the same topic, asking you about Skyworks, which you addressed. But what about Corvo? Are, do you own Corvo? I do. I do own Corvo. I own more Skyworks than Corvo. Corvo is also a phenomenal company. They're both in the same business, although Corvo has some additional businesses. And very simply, they're RF chips, semiconductors, which take the frequencies in. Now, you need more of those call them antennas, then you need it in 4G. So Verizon was telling me maybe six chips per phone instead of one or two in 4G, and then take that, and it goes into all those business uses I was talking about. So their TAM increases so dramatically, it's impossible to calculate. That last question was from the apropos, put money to work on Twitter. That's the Twitter handle, so interesting there. Uh, thanks for answering that extra question, too. All right, John, to you from Zahid in Brooklyn, New York. What's your outlook on Gilead near term? Zahid, I like it. I'm still long and strong, Gilead. I am writing calls against it because I think it's a little bit of a long road, you know, into at least the fall before we get a little bit more certainty about how well the vaccine work is going. But uh, South Korea, Scott, just uh, said that they are moving to approve remdesivir um, as a treatment for COVID. So I would say hold on to this one. All right, good stuff. Lastly, Margaret, Larry in Pittsburgh. Is PNC Financial a buy? Well, hi, Larry. I see that that's a, a local financial service firm near you locally. Uh, look, this stock is down 28% this year. It's up 40% off the lows. There is such intense investor concern right now around the risk to dividends and all of these bank stocks. And with CCAR coming up, you know, some of this uh, investor concern will have some clarity. Uh, but I do see PNC as a good value here, 4% dividend yield. It just exited its 22% stake in BlackRock, creating likely an obscene amount of XX capital needed to fund their, their dividends on a go-forward basis. So PNC, high-quality bank, well-positioned and trading below book value.